Welcome to Conversate, a podcast where we engage in conversation. On this week's episode, our premiere episode, Pastor Aaron Gerke and Pastor Kevin Bender, the pastors at Saints Peter and Paul Lutheran Church in Houghton, Michigan, engage in a conversation about the book, The Spiritually Vibrant Home. We hope you enjoy it. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, buddy. Welcome to Conversate. Yeah, you ready to conversate, man? The podcast with a real word as its title. That's right. Podcast that's meant to be easy on the ears. You know, Miriam Webster says the word conversate is grating and people don't use it. But Kevin Bender, he uses it. Put the great in grating. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I try to do. Cheers. Anyway. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so what are we what are we trying to do on this podcast here? Well, you know, I think Aaron, we're just sitting down, two dudes, trying to follow Jesus. Uh, and I think a little bit more about I guess what he's shown us, you know, like what, what we're learning, um, what he's revealing, um, trying to walk, yeah, I don't know, trying to walk as faithful uh, Christians um, and having spiritual conversations. So con- to, to conversate spiritually. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think what I've, what I've realized too over, I mean, you're just getting going at being a pastor, doing a fantastic job, by the way. Um, but I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years and again, in the preaching task um, that, that we get to do, you know, week after week, there's a lot of stuff that um, I think it gets left on the, what do they say? Like the, the it gets cut out and left, left on the, on the floor or, you know, crumpled up and thrown in the garbage. And some of that, sometimes that's so still valuable you know we kind of be selective of what we what we preach and so i was kind of thinking that we could let let listeners in on some of that stuff as well like Mm. not only not only what did we hear preached or what did we preach but also like i don't know what's some of the story behind the story or some of the 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 scripture uh, behind what we preach or that kind of stuff too i think i think I don't know. I'm excited to have more of those conversations, mm. um, and uh, maybe you'll enjoy listening to us conversate. Yeah, so, I hope so. Yeah. So we are we're uh, kicking off this podcast as we are um, kind of kicking off our fall ministry at our church, and we're using um, a book by Lutheran Hour Ministries um, called "The Spiritually Vibrant Home." Uh, the power of messy prayers, loud tables, and open doors. And Lutheran Hour Ministries is a ministry of our church body, um, a worldwide ministry that brings the gospel to a lot of unreached places. And in this book, they partnered up with the Barna Research Group, um, which does a lot of like, Christian-based research. Um, and, and in this partnership, they did interviews with spiritually vibrant homes to see what the practices are of those spiritually vibrant homes. And uh, so, yeah, so we're gonna be preaching on this for four weeks. We're doing small group Bible studies. We're, our, our Sunday school, our education time is revolved around this. Our podcast <laughs> uh, for these four weeks is gonna be uh, right in that. And so I think for, for those of you listening and for us, you know, we believe there's not much more foundational to our our lives, our, our humanity than to than our families, our family, you know, where we, where we start. Um, so those of you who are spouses with your spouse, those of you who are parents, you know, with your spouse and with your children, those of you who are grandparents with, with all of that, those of you who are single, uh, with your housemates and with your, uh, the people that you live life with your coworkers, uh, God has placed us in all these relationships, um, to be present with Jesus to have that spiritual vibrancy given to us and to share it with others. So I think we're really passionate about that. But uh, I preached on just kind of kicking this off on Sunday about what it means to be a spiritually vibrant home. And so, I don't know, in our conversate podcast, I suppose the way we're going to do this, at least for now, uh, is the 
non-preacher was going to interview the preacher or something like that. Yeah. He was going to ask me some questions. And... Let's see where it takes us. Sure. Yeah. That's how conversating goes. I We should look that up. Is conversating a word? Uh, I don't think so. I think conversing. At that point, you have to drop the conversate and just go straight converse. But I could be wrong. Who knows? I didn't even know that conversate wasn't a regular word. <laughs> I've been using it forever. It's it's about to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna make it a regular yeah. word. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You you mentioned that you preached this last week on uh, kind of this whole idea of households and of spiritually vibrant homes, uh, and you made this kind of comment at the beginning of your sermon about a distinction that they make in this book between homes and households yeah um, or the way that maybe in the uh, hebrew or greek language the, what that word means and what it means kind of in our context can yeah. you tell, tell tell us more about that yeah when the in the hebrew language the word for house is uh, bait i believe and then the, in greek the greek word is oikos and uh, uh, from i i'm not sure i learned this distinction uh, when we were doing biblical language studies. I don't know if it's something you picked up on, um, but I I mean, the, the book really draws it out and, and got me thinking just in those biblical languages and in the biblical context, when it speaks about a house, um, it's not just talking about the physical structure. So if it were written, you know, the house of Aaron, mm, mm-hmm. like as I said in my sermon, you're not just talking about the yellow ranch on second street in Hancock. You're talking about the, perhaps the structure, but also the people in it. Mm. And then in a biblical context, and that, this is something that I think is really revelatory as well as in a biblical context, a, a household or, or the people of the house, it was a, it's a bigger idea than we imagine it in our American context. Right. Because um, I think I read it, I don't know if I read it, I don't think it's in the book. I think I heard it or read it somewhere else, like um, that, um, that well, we're, we're like the most individualistic society mm-hmm. um, that I think has, <laughs> you know, ever existed. Um, lots of other cultures operate with with a closer relationship between all those those family members and that and that household and the connection there. So yeah, I don't know I don't know what that is about our American context that that gets us thinking that way, but I think it's that's a helpful distinction so that when we're reading the Bible and um, and it gets into talking about households, I mean I the book drew it out how many I'll have to I'll have to find a link but or the page number but throw the notes. Yeah how many uh, how many times is the word household mentioned in the in the scriptures? Over two thousand. Over two thousand. In the Old Testament alone. Just the Old Testament. Um, yeah, and then I think several hundred in the New. Right. And so in all of those, it's more they're they're talking about more people than just the the nuclear family, right? Yeah. Right. Well, and, and so like thinking too about you know like your comment of the individualization of you know our society of, of America. Uh, I guess we're not only talking about, um, I don't know, maybe this kind of feeling like you don't know your neighbors in your neighborhood or... Um, Guilty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of like different ways that plays out, you know, this individual. I guess there's a lot of, we can, when we're making decisions, it's usually, you know, oh, how does it affect me? And like, I'm not thinking of a wider scope of my decision making, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I don't know. I. I think like culturally in the, in the biblical times at least we know in the old testament i mean things were more tribal mm-hmm. community based obviously people didn't get up and move the great distances that like that we do like i mean you and i don't sure. have i mean your wife's family is three hours from here <laughs> you know but you guys are kind of here as husband wife daughter i mean my family is the same um some people locally have other you know, a larger clan around them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's that's a, an American idea, like this, you know, graduate from high school, go to college, fly the coop and start your own life. Totally. You know? So I think there's there's some of that at, at play. Yeah. 
Well, I'm just trying to think too now of how does this idea of individualization affect people's faith, do you think? You know, where do you see that play out in this yeah. idea of what it means for me to have faith yeah. versus my household? Well, I, th I think that too, I think, I mean, I'm not an expert on, you know, world cultures and all that stuff, but at least in my experience, um, in, in Western world and in America, um, we think of spirituality in individualistic terms. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, we we're living in a you know a context where you know you can have your religion, your neighbor can have their religion, your friend can have their religion, and our our society tells us that it's most right and mm. loving to say that's how it should be. Don't ask any questions so long as you're a good person and you love other people. It doesn't matter what you believe because what you believe is what you believe and what I believe is what I believe. Mm. And therefore that's just kind of as far as it goes. So I think we, we think about our faith very individualistically that way like well my spirituality is like a personal it's a yeah. personal thing like i don't i don't talk about it it's what my my christianity is what gives me hope mm. it's what gives me purpose you might get that from another source but for me that that's what it is we don't think of it like uh, communally i think i mean sure. we love our church and i think people that are involved in churches still see the purpose of churches um, as that fellowship, but there, some of this creeps into our Christianity as well. When sometimes we say, "Well, I can also be a Christian without a church," mm. you know, I can worship God without attending a worship service. You know, so we we get into all these kind of distinctions where it's like, "Well, kind of, <laughs> sure, yeah, but also not like." we're designed and created to be in relationships with God, but also with one another. So God's given us our faith, mm -hmm. not just for us, but for the people around us. Sure. And that's something that Everett's comments about, about like all the different times in scripture you hear, not just this person was saved, but them and their whole household, right? It wasn't yeah. just the one guy. It was spreads out to the rest of the household. Right. Um, and that's, it's interesting you say that uh, even think about my own like experience of my Christian faith you know like it is an intimate thing and it's odd that sometimes I even have a hard time talking about it with my own siblings huh. you know my own parents it's just not like on the tip of my tongue for a conversation right huh. um, I think because it is so privatized in a way yeah um, but but as you say yeah uh, God's people have always been in a congregation yeah. uh, always been in a community and it's good to, I guess, foster that communal sense of our walk together. Right. And I think <laughs> so often as the church, too, we, you know, we talk about being bold witnesses uh, in, in the world and speaking of Jesus to our coworkers and our neighbors and all this stuff. And it's all true, and, and we're called to do that. But I think what we're trying to do, at least for these four weeks, and I think even more so after that, is a lot of us aren't even doing that in our own homes, <laughs> you know? Guilty. <laughs> uh, so, like, if we can't be comfortable, hmm. those of you who are married, talking to our spouse about faith and driving into deep spiritual intimacy with one another, hmm. and those of you with children with our children, or those of you with roommates with your roommates, you know, like, how in the world are we supposed to do that with strangers, you hmm. know? Or... Uh -huh. people that are far from God like if we we're already living in relationship with people like mm. so we've got to get to this place and what, what we hope to model in this podcast is just how to how to have spiritual conversations like that's that's because if we if we hear it if you guys watch, watch or listen to us I think I think we'll be more apt to try it out with the people that we live with once you start getting the, the name of Jesus mm. on your lips, 
and used to is just saying his name, mm. I think you, you know, you get more and more comfortable with whatever the next thing is. So yeah, and as you can tell, it's nothing super high and lofty. As you are in this <laughs> grading conversation, yeah. <laughs> conversate, conversate, not just grading on the ears. So. Um. Well, so this idea then of, of having like Jesus' name on our lips or having our kind of our faith on our lips, like that takes me back into a little bit of the sermon that you gave okay. on Sunday and about the text, the Old Testament text, right? Because uh, uh, in that Deuteronomy text, you basically have, well, this is like a sermon of Moses, right? The people of Israel. Mm-hmm. And uh, he tells them to do all these things like talk about, God when they wake up and when they go on the way and when they lay down um, I don't know what, what are some contextual pieces like why why is Moses sharing that with the Israelites why do they need to hear that yeah I mean I um, at that at that time when when Moses and and the Israelites are, are there I mean they're still um, they're still coming up out of Egypt been in the wilderness <laughs> And there, there's this 40 year time span where they're um, the whole the whole thing is to shape and mold them to be God's people mm-hmm. in their preparation to enter the promised land uh, that God had promised to them. But there in the promised land are people uh, of all kinds of different religions. So so God is God is saying to them, guys, when you get there, there's going to be people worshiping idols. <laughs> There's going to be people doing all kinds of different stuff that is not pleasing to me. It's not glorifying to me. And I want you to be a people that trust in me above all things. So as soon as you step into that world, though, there's going to be all these distractions, all this newness, all these all these things that are going to draw your attention. So I want your attention to be on And I want you to know that I'm always around you. Just as in the wilderness, I'm with you. You can see me in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. I'm here with you in this tabernacle, dwelling with you, moving with you. I want you to know that when we get there, I'm still with you. I'm still with you and I want my word to be around you, to protect you, to guide you, all those things. That makes a ton of sense why he would want to tell them that then. Uh, thinking of them going into this new land where it's not this holy haven. Right. It's not, you know, it's not Sunday morning every day of the week for them. Right. Um, yeah, so they, they, he's trying to equip them then to have God on their tongues or for us to have Jesus on our tongues. Right. Um, I mean, it's no different. I mean, contextually than for us, I mean, I mean, we, we live in a world where there are lots of messages that are not glorifying to God that are just mm. peppered on us. I mean, especially in this pandemic season, especially in this uh, civil unrest season, especially in this pres- presidential election season. I mean, it's just like, holy smokes. What? I mean, none of that gives me hope. None of that gives me joy. None of that gives me, mm. gives me peace. I mean, I want, like, I want God's word around me because that that is that is what gives me vibrancy, <laughs> you know. That is what gives me peace, hope, joy, love, the fruits of the spirit. I mean, so yeah. I mean, we we have to surround ourselves constantly mm-hmm. um, with God's word. Yeah, there was a number of kids on Sunday, right? It was confirmation day, right. and so we had these kids come forward. It was really cool to hear some of them their little snippets from their faith essays talk about, uh, yeah, Jesus is my source of hope. Yeah. Or, you know, kind of no matter what else falls apart, uh, I know that Jesus is always there, uh, that he's kind of my foundation. Right. And you ended up tying a lot of that into then the gospel lesson from Luke, yeah. uh, that story of you know, the rock, building your house on the rock versus building your house on the sand. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned, you know, like, I mean, if your house is built on the sand, then well, you, you can get swept away, right, when the storms of life kind of come in. Right. But what do you see, what do you see today as being, I don't know, like the best sand, so to speak, you know? Like, I'm guessing there's lots of sand castles, mm. if you will. Um, you know, houses being built on maybe 
stuff that seems secure but really isn't mm. like w what do you kind of feel i don't know culturally right now you mentioned some of it we're kind of getting into it with the political season and with pandemic stuff but like what do you see as um yeah sand that might try to, to take the place of of jesus as a foundation mm. good question i mean i've had some conversations with people like more more I think more related to COVID like that it was certainly certainly it's been a, a time of um, re, like revealing like revealing what's behind a lot of the stuff that that we do and like mm -hmm. some conversations I've had with people are were sort of we were forced there was like a forced reset um, of well, we were just just grinding just going just you know, getting our kids from this thing to that thing to, you know, trying to, you know, make enough money to get the groceries, to get to the next day, to get to the weekend, to get to the, you know, it's just like, I think we're, I don't know what that saying goes, like you're so, so, almost so busy living that you, <laughs> you, you, you forget that like how to actually live i don't even know if that's a saying ferris right? bueller let me say it. ferris bueller i yeah. think says it right the beginning of his day off movie uh life moves pretty fast if you don't stop around once in a while you might miss it oh yeah i'm not sure if that's what i was going for but yeah ferris bueller <laughs> great movie i tried to drive my parents car in reverse you know when to I was take like, the miles yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i actually didn't oh okay <laughs> and it flew out the back yeah exactly um <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't know. Hmm. I don't I don't think sure, I mean there are a lot of people that their pursuit is fame. Their pursuit hmm. is power, prestige. Like sure, I mean that is certainly some people's pursuit, but I think a lot of I think a lot of people are just kind of like just just trying to just getting caught up in the cultural hmm. moment. Like um, I don't know. I mean, I just had a conversation yesterday too with a young guy, like how how political affiliations have become like a new religion for people. You know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, well, my my hope is with the the, Re the Republicans. You know, mm -hmm. my hope is with the the Democrat. And it's just like <sighs> my whole identity is with this thing. It's like that's not like that's not you know yeah. I mean our whole society like just pick an issue you know sure like, sure I, I, something that came up the other day at home was uh, environmental kind of concerns okay. yeah. right you know global warming there's okay. a, a an album where the opening track is basically hammering on this massive crisis that if we don't do something about it the world's gonna end you okay. know or that, or that we need to do this this and this and if you're not on board you're essentially you know, destroying the world, but if you are on board, then you're going to save the world, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, it sounds a lot like this kind of like, I don't know, almost like religious parody you're talking about. Right, right. And so I, I think we're just, it's all those messages, right, that are constantly hitting us and we're trying to decipher, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, which of these do I align with? Which of these is my identity? Which of these do I pursue? Which of these, like, because, and all, all the while... <laughs> You know the foundation is just getting because mm. ultimately like at the end of the day eternally the, like none of that lasts sure <laughs> yeah it doesn't i mean i gave the illustration of like i we went to the beach a lot this summer and like you know building sand castles and i just think of this one this one memory we were at lake superior on a nice sand beach and uh and i i built I built this cool castle uh, with with Phoebe, and the waves were coming, and they were they were chopping out at it. And I was like, "We gotta save! We gotta save the save the castle!" I was like, "Quick, get some sticks!" You know. So so we tried to like build like shove sticks into the sand around this sand castle, and the the water would still just like go like creep in and go like just just hit it. You know, we did. I don't know. Like, I feel like that's how a lot of people are doing life. Like, well, this thing's, this thing's failing me. I got to reach out for this one. I got or got to reach out for this one. And mm. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, like 
plain and simple as the gospel says, if, if our foundation is not the rock of Jesus, mm. nothing, nothing stands. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, just thinking of all the things that the pandemic really did expose as like, yeah, that's not the way, you know, you thought things could all go this certain way yeah. and now boom, no, it can't happen that way. Right. Um, that was a definitely an eye opening kind of reset. And some of this language too of, of you know, I mean, I think you're spot on with like the busyness or like the the way we get swept kind of into a current yeah. as humans, right? You know, I was almost thinking of um, a rock in water, like a river, right? And if you're that rock, then you're standing still, you know, like even though everything else around you is moving, like you, you can always know, like you know who you are, you know kind of what your purpose is, um, kind of know where you're headed, right? Yeah. Um, but but there's all these other things that really want to kind of sweep you down the river, yeah. and uh, and, it's, and it's easy the passi- the passivity in which we can get kind of I don't know up in arms about the next election or uh, you know health concerns or uh, environmental concerns. Yeah. Um, not to say that they're not important things, right? It's do you have that? Do you have first things first? Right, yeah. right. And do we step into those things? with a solid foundation, mm. right? Because I, 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 I think, I mean, we need to be present in the world. Like we're not called to just duck and cover and, you know, <laughs> uh, just hide out until Jesus comes or- It's not a bunker, it is a house. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Whoever the, have you ever watch those show like Doomsday Preppers or something? Uh, or, y- or yes, what's called? Molly watched it and I, Chime, or I, I caught a couple snippets of it, but yes, yeah, those are pretty cool. They're very interesting. <laughs> the things those people choose to do or say. Some some of them are like, I, why, I wouldn't even want to live there. I know. I'd rather just go with the, the doomsday. <laughs> yeah. Um, if there are any preppers listening, yeah, no, you know, no, no offense. offense. Yeah, uh, we'll come. If we really need it, we'll we'll, come yeah. to, we'll, 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 we'll be knocking. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, what else is there for us, Aaron? I think, I mean, I think where we're going to be going over the next couple of weeks is, is going to be getting into some of the, some of the practicalities of this, right? And I, I, I like the book because um, <laughs> the, the titles of the, the disciplines, you know, are messy prayers and loud tables and open doors and um, I mean, if you step, if you step into my house or if I turn the camera around to my office, like, <laughs> I mean, messy. yeah, I mean, we're so good at like putting on a, putting on a good face, but not a good mm. show for people. Um, and sometimes we think that like our, our spirituality or our relationship with Jesus has to look like that. Otherwise it's not good enough, mm. you know, like. Sometimes, for whatever reason, we think, well, my daily devotions have to mean that I wake up at 4 a.m. and I meditate for an hour and I read, you know, 40 chapters of the scripture. And, mm. you know, uh, it, I mean, it may. <laughs> That's not bad. Like, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to always look so much like that in our households. Like, there's, there's flexibility and there's freedom and that there's imperfection because we're imperfect people mm, mm-hmm. um but the 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 point is still the same like we're called and, and created to know that we have a spiritual vibrancy because we're people who are alive in christ through his death and resurrection and that's not just for us mm. it's for the people around us starting with the people who are most mo- uh, immediate co- like uh, proximity to us and then going from there so totally yeah, yeah i think uh I'm, I'm excited to hear this old testament reading again and again each week yeah because it's a good reminder of the messiness like the people of israel who weren't exactly like your top specimens of wow faith faithful people who had it all together you know right i mean they weren't supposed to be in the wilderness for 40 years that was kind of uh because they couldn't get it right right you know but god was still with them leading them around them um and 
God remain faithful to his people constantly. Right. Um, so I, I, don't know, I take a lot of courage in that, knowing that <laughs> right. it's going to be messy, um, and that's okay. Um, but God wants, I mean, he's, he wants to pursue us in our homes, yeah. in our households. And uh, I don't know what a difference that might make uh, for a whole community then. Thinking of communal aspect, right. you know, a bunch of households right here in our area, um, kind of just demonstrating that vibrancy and that, that life. Right. Um, that could be pretty cool. I think life is life is contagious too like life 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 goes on to create new life as well mm -hmm. right? especially especially in a world of chaos and destruction and death like people are looking for vibrant hope and life and mm -hmm. something other than this the storms of this life right so i think this is a great time not only for us to learn how to be spiritually vibrant households but for us then to grow those things um, so that so that we can be present in this world as well as spiritually by our homes so yeah well, I enjoyed our conversating yeah it's conversation do we still have to say conversation let's just end it with conversate hope you enjoyed our conversate see you next week bye